Hi, my name's John Payton. Uh, I've been an actor since I was in my mid-40s. Before that, I did fundraising um, and a degree in marketing. I now have a portfolio lifestyle where I, when I can't act because there's no work, I am uh, working in training in communication skills um, and I do audio books, which is a, can, an easy job because you can do it from home if you've got the right facilities, and I do. The kind of work I've done in, has mainly been theatre, though I did have a couple of good roles, very small cameos in The Other Berlin Girl and Sweeney Todd with Tim Burton directing, which was fantastic. Um, my favourite production that I've ever been in was when I played Nick Bottom in A Midsummer Night's Dream at Hampton Court Palace. At what age did acting first start becoming an interest to you? I think I was very interested, at even at primary school, um, but I was a realist and realised that when I got to 18, 19, that my academic gifts were quite good. And so I decided it would be very difficult to be in um, an actor unless your name was Judy Dench or John Gielgud to always earn a living. So I went to university and did marketing and business studies. I then had a good career and gave up a job when in my 40s, I suppose some people would say I had a midlife crisis. In fact, I've even said that. Uh, and I went to drama school for a year and got a postgraduate di uh, a diploma at East 15 acting school and haven't looked back since because it took till my 40s to realise I needed to do something for me not for everyone else. So I was selfish enough to go become an actor. And I love it. I don't blame you. <laughs> and did you have any icons or inspirations? Um, I think my inspiration was when I was at probably fifth form at school. We went to see The Crucible at Bristol Old Vic because I, I lived in Bristol, grew up in Bristol. Um, and... I remember being perched right up in the gods of Bristol Old Vic, looking down, and we watched The Crucible, and it blew me away. They had these girls flying around on wires and things, pretending to... You know, it's an amazing play about prejudice and about uh, thwarted romance and passions and evil, um, and it blew me... It literally blew me away. So from then, I kind of got involved at the local level at... That was my inspiration to get involved. Icons. I absolutely worshipped uh, Laurence Olivier for a strange reason because I only ever, you know, I only ever saw him on black and white films mostly. But I just thought he was terribly, terribly impressive. But not not the best actor in the world. Just huge presence. Mm. Um, since then, you know, people like. Steve Graham, Sean Bean, who I saw in Time recently with a ter terrific TV series. Wonderful. I just love the, the gritty reality that TV and mm. film can bring. That's kind of been my inspiration. And the, and, and the writing in Time was just oh, spot on. The out of this world. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy McGovern. Whoa. Wow. Just I, inspirational. I remember watching it and just thinking... Stephen Graham and Sean Bean. Wow. Yeah. You couldn't pick two better acts. No. And then the, terrific. then the other one that blew, absolutely blew me away was um, Happy Valley with, uh, well, Sally Wainwright wrote it. Mm -hmm. Outstanding writer. Uh, totally inspirational. Would love to meet her and work for her sometime. Mm. Who knows? <laughs> Yet to watch that one. <laughs> oh, you've not watched Happy Valley? No. You really, it will blow your mind. Mm. So gritty. She's a female police sergeant and mm -hmm. her daughter dies and leaves the grandson for her to bring up. Mm -hmm. And the daughter dies because of a drug addiction brought on by the boy who comes back into her life. Amazing. Uh, scary, scary programme. Gripping. Have to watch give it a watch. Watch it. And before acting, was, was there anything else she did? Yeah. Uh, had a very rich uh, life before. I... After I left university, I went uh, 
as VSO, Voluntary Service Overseas, and I went to the middle of the Pacific, a place called Kiribati, and spent three wonderful years there teaching. Well, initially I went out to become a teach O-level bookkeeping because it, I'd finished part finished qualified as a, an accountant. Uh, but I ended up teaching biology, history, uh, a bit of amateur dramatics, a bit of uh, gymnastics and stuff, because the school was very remote and I was the only male English speaking teacher. But all these kids were learning in English and doing Cambridge overseas O levels. When I came back from that, I got involved in charity because I'd, I'd, through my studies, I'd found that I didn't want to sell soap. What I wanted to sell was people and their needs mm. and make lives, make a difference to people's lives. Mm. So I got back into fundraising and I worked places like uh, the Royal Star and Garter Home for Disabled Ex-Servicemen and Women in Richmond in Surrey. Um, and then I got into charities that de dealt with mental health issues. Uh, one was called uh, the NSF, National Schizophrenia Fellowship. It's now re being called Rethink. It's changed its name. I did fundraising for them. And then I, I've worked for SANE. I've worked for organisations that look after carers. So I've had a rich mm. life and met some lovely, lovely, mm. amazing, inspirational people. And I kind of use them, what I remember of them, when I'm acting. You know, some of their characteristics and things. Mm. And what do you remember the most about your first acting audition? Oh, golly, I don't even know if I remember it. Um, oh, well, well, I can remember my very first successful acting audition after drama school, and that was to play uh, Nick Bottom in Midsummer Night's Dream. It was good fun. I went thinking I was be uh, the king, Oberon, king of the fairies. I wanted the serious part, not that anything in Shakespeare is always that serious in his comedies. But during the audition process, the, the director said to me, I think we've got some bottom in you, <laughs> which, yeah, ha ha ha, all the jokes aside, yeah. my bottom got praised mm. eventually. Um, it was the most amazing experience. So uh, I realised that maybe I, what I think I, portray isn't what other people see so it's a very interesting learning experience mm. and which artists have you sorry let me rephrase that <clears throat> which artists have you enjoyed working with oh well i when you do small productions and they tour a lot um you kind of live in each other's pockets and i've got some amazing friends particularly from a tour of hamlet that i did uh, you don't always stay with all of the friends of all of the casts. But this lot, there's at least four that I'm re in regular touch with, um, and we're friends for life. We had such a challenging time that it bonded us all together. Um, in terms of learning, I can remember the very, very first unpaid work I did when I left drama school was uh, to be a, what they call a supernumerary at the RSC. I got to meet Sir Peter Hall, who we all had auditioned for. We got called in, not got any money. They just paid us travel cards to work. But I was, uh, Hugh Quarshy was playing Mark Antony mm -hmm. in Julius Caesar. We, we were Caesar's, uh, what, part of Caesar's army, which Peter Hall called us the A-team, because we were so much younger. The rest of the supernumeraries lived in the Barbican, and the average age of the army was something like 70-something. So with these students that he'd, fresh out of drama school students that he'd got for nothing, mm -hmm. or next to nothing, uh, it, we dropped the age to about 40 by bringing the average down because we were all quite young. Um, but Hugh Corshi, watching him every night, standing in the wings, we were about to go on after he finished, Friends, Romans, Countrymen, he genuinely had tears in his eyes every night on stage, every single performance. That blew me away. Mm -hmm. Fabulous performance as Mark Antony. And are there any other artists you would like to work with in the future? Well, yes. I mean, I'd love to work with Sean Bean and Steve Graham if I had the opportunity. Um, I'm not... I, I would love to work with Daisy Mae Cooper because she's very, very funny. I have just done a tiny little cameo um, 
in something that's coming out next year with called Rain Dogs. But mm -hmm. she's there's something very edgy and very funny about her. Uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge and Fleabag mm -hmm. blew me away as well. It was very funny, um, and she was superb in it. Do you know, I, I love working and meeting new people, so mm -hmm. I don't mind. I haven't really got any hungry ambitions to work with mm -hmm. anyone in particular. Mm -hmm. But if I give the opportunity, I would love to work with anybody. Give us a job! <laughs> <laughs> As they say. Yeah. And is there any role or character you would like to portray in the future? I would love to play King Lear. Or in King Lear Shakespeare. I've got a yen to, to do more Shakespeare. I would love to be Prospero in um, The Tempest as well. Those two are very good my two very coveted roles mm -hmm. to play. Uh, or um, I use it as an audition a lot. Mm -hmm. If I could play Salieri in Amadeus, uh, oh, that would be my dream. Uh, Salieri. Or recently someone said to me, well, why don't you play Fagin? And I said, well, I'd love to play Fagin. I've got the right, got the right nose for it. However, <laughs> who knows? It comes it comes up a lot, Fagin lately. Usually, Fagin's brought up, been brought up quite a bit lately. Judy Dench has been mentioned quite a few times this week. Yeah. And then the most popular name that's mentioned for people in interviews is Robert De Niro. Usually. Oh, so really? yeah. Oh. Usually, almost. I think I think I've lost count. Most every interviewee said Robert De Niro for an inspiration, or at some point mentioned him in the interview. Uh, yeah. I see. I, I don't tend to play villains, even though mm. I did get the, yeah. the villains when I went for the comedy parts. Mm -hmm. um, so I never. Well, I, mean, I don't deny that he's an amazing actor, mm. and Judy Dench is fantastic. Um, uh, Stephanie Cole, um, Anne. Oof, anyway. I can't remember her name. Anne Reed. Anne Reed. Mm -hmm. yep. Amazing woman. She's just, she's so talented. Um, if I could have worked with anyone who's no longer with us, it would have been uh, Victoria Wood because mm -hmm. her writing is, I don't know if you've ever watched Dinner Ladies, it's the most, oh, it's just genuinely, touchingly, mm -hmm. pathetically, as in pathos, uh, beautiful writing and very, very funny. Um, and amazingly drawn characters. Oh, so that brings me. Would I anyone else I'd like to work with? Julie Walters. Yes, mm. please. Very, very, very talented lady. Mm. I remember my first, first, very first interview with my very first interview with Richard Ashton, the yes. character that he wanted to play, and still the character that he wanted to play. Uh, when we got to, well, he was interviewee one, and he was interviewee one hundred and one. Okay, because I wanted it to be a hundred interviews later. Yeah, so it was an updated one with him, and both interviews it was Fagin, was it current character that he oh, very I, much wants I, to play, and he's he's a very tall. Uh, I think Richard's six three, six four, yeah. uh, like long hair, beard. So, yeah, um, I I think he said he. I think in the first interview he said he played him. I think at some stage, but it wasn't quite. Well, yeah, I have to take a look back at it. Yeah. You know, a hundred interviews is a you know, lot to remember. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you remember his name. Which yes, is yes. Well, I remember all interviewees' names. I, <laughs> I don't know how. It's, I remember all hundred interviews, all hundred interviewees' names in order. Oh, and wow. I, for some reason, I remember every single episode of Doctor Who from 2005 to oh, 2010. Well, you see, there's, order. Another, there's another person I'd yeah. love to, mm. I'd have the ambition to work with is Russell T. Davis and his Doctor Who. Oh yes, writing. I mean, you know, it's a sin. Mm. Uh, he's just... Gatwick, is he? Mm. Yeah. What's the chap's name? The new doctor. New, new... Oh, Nkuti. Uh, yes, I don't know his surname, but no, I mean, mm. I a friend of mine uh, who I was at the same agency with. Uh, her name's Freema Adjaman. Uh, she was uh, Martha Jones with yes. uh, David Tennant's doctor, and um, they had they had so much fun. Yes, definitely. It, and that's what is the joy of acting and being part of a good cast, a good team, yep. is you do end up having an awful lot of fun. Mm. It's blooming hard work, but it's so rewarding. It's so it rewarding. Is. I've just finished something uh, which, bless it, it was an experience in itself because COVID intervened and we mm. had s we'd started filming in 2019. Yeah. No, in 2018, we did the first lot of filming. And then they tried to finish off and do some extras in 2019, COVID. 2020, 
COVID. 2021, COVID. And we eventually finished it earlier this year. Mm. And hopefully um, it's going to come out in early 2023. Who knows? But, I mean, the, the, the mm. director, a guy called Maximiano Cobra, bless him, is his life. And this nearly killed him in, in terms of emotions and finances mm. and whatever, because COVID got in the way. Mm. So, um, But it's called Misanthropos, and it's based on Timon of Athens by Shakespeare. And it's, oh, wow. it's, it's going to look good, I think. But who knows where it'll go. Mm. But it um, would be my first ever attending, oh no, my second ever, attending a film premiere. The first one was Sweeney Todd in the theatre mm -hmm. with uh, Tim Burton giving us all books. <laughs> Fantastic. You have to keep me posted, I'll take a look. Okay, I'll let you know when it comes. <laughs> well, when I know. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how do you feel your career has progressed over the years? Um, obviously, it, you know, I'm not I'm not world famous, but that's not why I went to be an actor. I, I wanted to be an actor because I it fulfills me as a person and the challenges it brings. Um, I was very excited when I got the part with Tim Burton mm -hmm. and shortly after I got this, the one in The Other Billing Girl and I met some really big names, uh, Eric Banner, Natalie Portman, Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. But ultimately how it's progressed it's been slow steady but not as much work as i'd like mm. i would you know covid in the last two years has wrecked theater really it has, uh, yes. it's picking up i've had some good auditions since mm -hmm. i got i moved away from london mm -hmm. um bless my agent catherine stonehouse for keeping me on because mm. i thought she'd drop me when i moved away from london but no she's got me good auditions down here and i'm very happy it's always good to have a good agent she's lovely mm. <laughs> And is there any other career you would like to pursue? I, I'm really enjoying uh, the challenge of uh, audiobook. Mm -hmm. I know that's related, really. Mm -hmm. But I, if I could um, step up my audiobook production, uh, mm -hmm. learn a bit more about doing the technical side myself, mm -hmm. um, as well as the interpretation and the reading and the narrating, um, that would be something I would enjoy for the next few years, I think, to... And it's not too challenging. You do a chapter a day and it keeps you busy. You sit, it's a bit static, though. You sit at the computer all day. Mm -hmm. So some, yeah, keep, keep the, the theatre acting and the audio books in, in juggled balance would be good. Mm -hmm. But not a different career. I'm happy where I am. And what would you say are the advantages and disadvantages of working in this industry? Uh, the disadvantages can be obviously a uh, lack of funding or a lack of opportunity. Um, it's difficult and challenging to make a living as an actor. Um, thank goodness I have the other skills that I can fall back on and that's why I call it a portfolio lifestyle. Uh, the benefits well for me personally it was completion i'd done all that time before working for charity and getting a huge amount of self worth and satisfaction by working with these people helping them change their lives raising the money that meant that the charity could carry work carry on working to keep them comfortable in their lives um but the acting added the extra dimension that was for me so the benefits for me have been self-fulfillment. Self mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> and what advice would you have for any individual that's pursuing a career in this industry? Good luck would be my first two words. After that, determination. Don't, don't let the rejections get you down because you get so many more no's than you get yeses. Always, when you walk out of an audition, I always have good habits. I've learned good habits. When I walk out of an audition, I give myself 20 minutes to beat myself up for not doing it as well as I'd hoped, mm -hmm. which is usually what you end up doing. Um, and, you know, saying, oh, if only I'd said it this way, or if I'd done this, or if I'd smiled more, or whatever. Mm -hmm. After that 20 minutes, 
I no longer allow myself to even think about it because what I have to do then is to shape myself up and say, you know what, if they don't give you the job, that's ultimately because they didn't think you were right, but that's their loss <laughs> because I know I was good for it. Um, and it's about the self, uh, self-worth, self keeping that going because it, it can be very, it can knock you if you get too many no's and no, and no yeses for quite a few months mm. or longer, it does lead you to question your decision to do it. Mm. But when you get the job and when you're in the, in with the new team, with the new cast and the new family, because you do become like family while you're doing things, it makes up for all that, <laughs> I find. Okay, thank you very much for your time today, John. It's an absolute pleasure, Ben. Nice to meet you. And you.